Half-Life, other than being the name of a really fun uh, video game, is actually a chemical kinetics term. Half-Life is simply the time that it takes for the concentration of a reactant to decrease to one half of its initial value, right? So if you start out with uh, 10 molar, right? If your concentration of your reactant is 10 molar, the half-life would be the amount of time that it takes for that concentration to decrease from 10 molar to five molar. So that's what half-life is. And so the half-life expression um, can be derived by substituting one half of the initial concentration for a uh, concentration of A at time T in the integrated rate law equation. So just as each individual order of reaction, zero, first, and second, has its own integrated rate law equation, each order of reaction, zero, first, and second, also have has its own unique half-life expression. And so uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to derive, we're gonna derive the half-life expressions uh, for uh, for zero, first, and second order reactions. Okay, so let's talk about the half-life for a zero order reaction, right? Zero order. So recall that the integrated rate law equation for zero order is concentration of A at time T is equal to minus KT plus the initial reactant concentration, right? Now, just a second ago, I said that wherever you see a uh, concentration of A at time T, you can substitute that, you can substitute, instead of concentration of A at time T, you can substitute one half of the initial concentration, right? Because again, half-life is the time it takes to, uh, for the concentration of the reactant to decrease to half of its initial value, right? And so at this point, in order to get the half-life or the expression for half-life, all we have to do is simply solve for T, right? So the first thing, of course, and this is just algebra. So I'm gonna try to go through this uh, fairly quickly, although, if you want me to slow down, um, let me know, and I can slow down, or if, if there's something that you need me to explain better, just whatever, you know? Um, I really, really want the feedback, and I would appreciate it. Okay, so we're gonna solve for T in this equation. So the first thing that, uh, that we're gonna do is uh, subtract the concentration of A uh, sub-zero um, from both sides of this equation, right? And so, what we end up getting is negative one half of the initial concentration, right? Because one half minus one is negative one half is equal to minus KT. Now, if you have a minus and a minus, well, and you multiply, let's say, both sides of the equation by minus one, that's get, that gets rid of these minus terms, right? So one half times the concentration of A uh, initially is equal to KT. And so at this point, um, all that we have to do is to uh, divide both sides of the equation by K, and that gives us our half-life expression, which is T is equal to concentration of A initially over 2K, or one half times the concentration of A over K. It's the same thing. This is just a nice clean uh, way to, uh, to write this equation, right? So the half-life expression for zero order reaction is uh, T, and usually you'll see it written as T one half, T sub one half is equal to, for zero order reaction, the initial concentration of the reactant divided by two times the rate constant. We're going to move on to how to derive the half-life expression for a first order reaction. So what is the half-life expression for a first order reaction? Well, of course, in order to know that, we need to know the integrated rate law equation. And I've 
applied it so many times I've memorized it. So natural log of the concentration of A at time T equal to minus KT plus natural log of the initial reactant concentration. So that's the integrated rate law for the first order reaction, right? And of course, uh, for half-life, we're just going to substitute the term one-half uh, of the initial concentration, um, where we see um, concentration of A at time T. Um, so we can do that, um, but that would at this point, that would require uh, a lot of steps. Um, me personally, I mean, it, you, there's more than one way to do this. Um, it just depends on your on your preferences. But personally, I like to use that other form of the first order integrated rate law equation that I that we talked about earlier, right? So that form would look like this, where we have the natural log of the concentration of A at time t divided by the initial concentration of A is equal to minus k t. Really, so like, so all I've done, right, is I've subtracted both sides of the equation of this equation up here uh, by the natural log of the uh, initial concentration, and then of course just understanding the properties of logarithms that simplifies down to uh, this, this this fraction right here. Natural log of that of that fraction equals minus k t. So, like I said before, um, all we're going to do is uh, we're basically going to substitute one half times the initial concentration for this concentration of A at time T term, right? So um, basically what that means is that, I'm not sure if I can erase this. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I tried to erase it, but I ended up erasing what I didn't want to erase. So basically what that means is I end up with the natural log of the concentration of A at, at uh, or initial concentration of A, excuse me, uh, over two times the initial concentration of A. Now, initial concentration of A over initial concentration of A, uh, those all cancel out. And so it simplifies down to the natural log of one half is equal to minus KT. And so, um, Dividing both sides of this equation by negative k, uh, we end up getting natural log of negative one half. <laughs> we can say over k. That's what t is, or that's what t is, right? And then uh, this actually uh, simplifies down further because the con the natural log of negative one half um, has an actual numerical value. Hey everyone, so I'm going to interrupt this video real quick just to tell you that I made a little mistake in this derivation. It should not be natural log of negative one half. If you type natural log of negative one half in your calculator, you won't get anything because it's undefined. Instead, it should be negative natural log of positive one half. Negative natural log of positive one half. I apologize, and uh, all right, we'll continue here. And so it simplifies to t one half is equal to. 0 0.693 over k because that's the natural logarithm of, of negative one half this is the, the 0 0.693 term right so this is the the half-life expression for a first order reaction and notice notice that this formula doesn't have the initial concentration anywhere right so this is actually a, a pretty useful, like first order kinetics is actually a very useful thing for chemists because um, you don't need to know the concentration of the reactant uh, to determine uh, the half-life, right? So there's a lot of useful applications that can be done. All right, so now what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna, we, have, we have one more left to go. <laughs> so we did zero order, we did first order, and we're going to do second order. Just like we did in the previous two examples, we're going to start with the integrated rate law equation. So in the case of a second order reaction, that's going to be one over the initial concentration, or excuse me, one over the concentration of the reactant at time t uh, is equal to kt plus one over 
the initial reactant concentration, right? So this is the second order integrated rate law, right? So uh, basically, uh, just like we did before, um, everywhere, anywhere we see concentration of A at time T, we're going to substitute that for, uh, let's see, erase that. We're going to substitute that for one half the initial concentration, right? Now, if you have one over one half, well, that's the same as two, isn't it? One over one half is two. You can try to enter that into your calculator. I think you'll end up getting the same answer that I got. So one over one half is two. And so this equation simplifies down to two over the initial concentration equals KT plus one over the initial concentration, right? And so at this point, um, like I said, all we got to do is uh, solve for t, right? Just solve for t. And so first what we're going to do is we're going to subtract both sides of this equation by 1 over concentration of A, right? So we get 2 over concentration of A initially minus 1 over concentration of A initially equals kT. So if we carry out the subtraction, we're going to have 1 over concentration of A initially equals kT. And so all we have to do at this point is uh, divide both sides by uh, k, and we're going to get uh, T1 half is equal to, for a second order reaction, 1 over k times the initial concentration of A. Right? Okay, so hopefully um, that has provided some value for you. Um, if it has provided value, um, please hit that like button. It does a lot to help um, algorithmically promote my content. Um, and uh, consider sending a super chat if you want to, like Offspring did earlier, for which I am eternally grateful. So I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint. And... We are, yep, that's where we are. And so if we look at uh, a, a simple summary of these uh, half-life expressions, uh, we have them all right here. Zero order, first order, second order. So like I said, you, um, you could memorize these three, but if you know the integrated rate law equations, then it's really not necessary to memorize these three. I mean, maybe you would be more comfortable memorizing them so that maybe you can, uh, you know, get the answer on your exam faster than if you had to derive them. Um, that's a personal judgment call uh, that you're going to have to make as a student. But um, personally, I, I don't like memorizing things. If I can avoid, anytime I can avoid memorizing something, um, I'm going to avoid memorizing something. <laughs> so, so I prefer to derive these equations um, rather, than, rather than memorize them. So, okay. So let's see. Uh, Okay, so we got a, a problem here. It says that we have a zero order decomposition of chemical X. That is a Powerpuff Girls reference. Um, I'm showing my age at this point. I don't, I'm not sure if anybody in here knows about or remembers the show Powerpuff Girls. Anyway, zero order decomposition of chemical X with a rate constant of 0 0.0081 molar per second began with an initial concentration of 7.4 molar. What is the half-life of this reaction? So, of course, I uh, encourage you to, uh, you know, get some paper out or whatever you, whatever you have and, and sort of follow along and do this, do this problem for yourself. See if you can do it on your own, you know. See if you can do it on your own. I will show you how to do it, but um, obviously the goal is for, for you to be self-sufficient and able to crush your chemistry homework, crush your chemistry exam. Okay, so uh, if you just give me a second here, go into the whiteboard. There it is. Okay, so let's just highlight the relevant, important pieces of this uh, problem, the given information that's going to help us. So we know it's zero order, 
Okay, so that's good. Um, we know that the rate constant is 0 0.0081 molar per second. And it, we know that our initial concentration is 7.4 molar. All right, so with just the, these three pieces of information, we are going to calculate the half-life, right? Now, remember, like I said before, every order of reaction, zero, first, second order, each has its own unique half-life expression. So for the zero order um, problem, we're gonna use the zero order half-life expression. And so if you uh, recall, we said that the half-life expression for a zero order reaction is T one half is equal to the concentration of A initially over two K, right? Yes. So this is the half-life expression for a zero-order reaction. And so at this point, all we need to do is uh, plug in the values, plug in the initial concentration, plug in the rate constant, and that will uh, that'll get, that'll get us where we need to be. So the half-life in this case is equal to initial concentration, that's 7.4 molar. And it's going to be 2 times the rate constant, which is 0 0.0081 molar per second. Always make sure your units cancel out. This will help you. Um, it's how you know you didn't make a mistake somewhere. Molar cancels with molar, and we end up with nothing but good old seconds which is good because a half-life is a time. And if we had a half-life reported in a unit that's anything but time, uh, be suspicious that maybe you screwed up some, somewhere. All right, so if you'll give me uh, just a moment, I will do this calculation uh, myself. I have not done it previously. I prepared these slides kind of at the last minute. Um, been a very busy week. So at this point, I would invite you guys to bang this calculation out for yourself and see if you get the same answer that I got. Okay, here we go. Okay, so the answer that I got, should I say it? I don't know. Red. Should I say the answer that I got? I got it's tricky because it's like a large number, but I want to make sure that uh, I use the correct number of significant digits. Um, you might think that's unimportant, and perhaps it is unimportant for understanding kinetics, but. Um, I mean, if it's not too much effort to do something right, it's like you might as well just, or too much additional effort to do something right, you might as well do something right. So reported to two significant figures, this is gonna be 4.6 times 10 to the second seconds, right? I think I did that correctly. Hey, hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to watch the full video from which this clip was taken, click the box over there on the left. And if you'd like to watch my entire chemical kinetics playlist, click the box on the right. Thank you very much for watching and take care.